All right, in this video, we will uh, continue to practice solving equations using the quadratic formula. Um, but let's start off by focusing on the part of the quadratic formula called the discriminant. And let's remember what the discriminant tells us. All right, so remember, here's the quadratic formula. And uh, we can use this to solve equations that are in this standard form, OK? Um, but the b squared minus 4ac part, that is called the discriminant. And it helps us to, to know ahead of time um, how many solutions there will be and will they be real or imaginary. And it goes like this. Um, if the discriminant is positive, we're in this situation. And uh, so there will be two real solutions. If the discriminant is 0, then we're in this situation where there's just one x-intercept. Um, so there's one real solution. If the discriminant is negative, all right, that means that there were no x-intercepts. There were no zeros. And uh, in that case, there, the only solutions will be imaginary. There will be two imaginary solutions. Now, if you um, think about where the discriminant is in the quadratic formula, um, this should be common sense to you. Um, so just, guys, remember, the discriminant is under the radical, okay? Now, think about how we get um, our two solutions in the first place. Usually when we solve a quadratic equation, usually we end up with two solutions. But when we do the quadratic formula, how do we get two solutions? Well, um, built into the quadratic formula, we have this plus or minus. All right, the plus or minus is where we get our two different solutions because we're adding something and that gives us one solution and we're subtracting something and, and that gives us the other solution. So it makes sense that if the discriminant is any positive number, so for example, imagine that the discriminant was 16, then I'd have six plus four and six minus four. Six plus four is 10. All right, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So um, by adding 4 and subtracting 4, I get my two different solutions, 5 and 1. Um, so it makes sense then that if the discriminant is 0, OK, that means I have a 0 here under the radical. So really, um, where normally I would be adding and subtracting some number, Adding and subtracting 0 doesn't really change anything. 6 plus 0 is 6. 6 minus 0 is 6. So I'm not really getting my two solutions like I normally would if it was like a 4 or something. So that's why I only get one solution uh, when the discriminant is 0, is 0, because I'm not adding or subtracting anything. So it, it would just be 6 over 2. That would just be 3, one solution. All right, I'm trying to get it to be more common sense for you. I don't want you to feel like, oh, I need to memorize this chart. No, um, if you just understand, of course, if it's positive, I'm going to have two solutions, plus, minus. Of course, if it's 0, then I'm not adding or subtracting anything. So I'm just going to have one solution. And of course, if the discriminant is negative, remember, the discriminant is under a radical. So if the discriminant is negative, that means you have a negative number underneath a radical. So of course, that's going to give you i. So you'll get two imaginary solutions, because you're adding and subtracting um, i. All right, so um, you know, memorize this if, if you have to. But if you understand why, um, it really becomes common sense, I hope. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate uh, the discriminant. Um, now remember, the discriminant is b squared minus 4 ac. Okay, so look, a is 1, all right, b is negative 6, and c is negative 10, all right, it's the coefficients. So if I do b squared, that's going to be negative 6 squared. Notice how I'm using parentheses. You do the same. And then 4ac, so that's 4 times 1 times negative 10.
All right, did I really need to type in the one? No, the one's not changing anything. You could have left that out. All right, the discriminant is 76, but the most important part of this is that it is positive, positive. So the discriminant is 76. Now, because it's positive, that means we have two real solutions. All right, if it had been zero, it'd be one real solution. If it were negative, it would be two imaginary solutions. All right, let's do number 10. Um, the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. So a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 4. So b squared, so that's negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. All right, notice my use of parentheses. This is not optional. You have to, if you're going to use a calculator at all, which um, you shouldn't have to use a calculator to do this, but if you're going to use a calculator, um, you have to put it in parentheses. Okay, so the discriminant is zero. All right, the discriminant equals zero. Therefore, there will be one real solution. Okay, because remember, if the discriminant is zero, one real solution. All right, whoa. Okay, number 11. Okay, uh, so we have A is negative two, B is five, and C is one. So if we do the discriminant, B squared minus four AC, <clears throat> then that's going to be 5 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times 1. Again, did I really need the 1? No, you could have left the 1 off. All right, the discriminant is 33. It is a positive number. So that means two real solutions. Okay. Um, let's see, what's next? All right, so for the rest of these, we're gonna actually solve. We're not just finding the discriminant we're going to go ahead and uh, solve all the way. But the first step will still be to find the discriminant. So for number 12, um, we have A is 1, B is 2, and uh, C is negative 4. So let's find the discriminant first. So B squared minus 4AC becomes 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 4. All right, so here's my setup. I did not need the 1. You could skip that if you want. So the discriminant is 20. All right, now let's go ahead and do the rest of the quadratic formula. All right, the quadratic formula says um, x will equal the opposite of b. Okay, b is 2, so the opposite of b is negative 2. And then it goes plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Well, that's the discriminant. So we'll just go ahead and put our square root of 20. Um, by the way, the discriminant does not include the radical. So if I ask you for the discriminant, like on problem number 9, for example, 
the discriminant is 76. Not the square root of 76, just 76. Okay, just remember that was a common mistake. And then uh, it's all over 2a. Um, and a is 1, so 2a will just be 2. Okay, so this is the first thing I should see. Now the square root of 20, you should be able to simplify this yourself without a calculator because 20 is 4 times 5 so that's going to be 2 radical 5 but your calculator will do it if you need to okay so I've got this 2 radical 5 now all over 2 now, do you see that all three of these are divisible by something? Okay, uh, I'm going to put a heart around these to remind me that um, it's all or nothing. If all three of these numbers are divisible by something, um, then we have to do it. But it couldn't, we couldn't do it if it was just the blue numbers. It has to be all three or nothing. So all of these are divisible by two. So I need to go ahead and do that. Um, if I do, I am going to get um, this will be 1, 1, and 1. Alright, so I'm going to have negative 1 plus or minus radical 5. Okay, that is the final answer. Alright, now of course I said 1, 1, and 1. So that would really make negative 1 plus or minus 1 radical 5 over 1, correct? Um, but uh, why does it always do that? Um, do we need this 1 in the bottom? No. Do we need this 1 right here? No. All right, that's why this is the answer. For some reason, every time I turn the eraser on, it jumps back to a previous point. I don't know how to stop it from doing that. Um, all right, let's move on to number 13. Again, let's start with the discriminant. All right, first of all, A is 4, B is 4, and C is 1. So always find the discriminant first. So B squared minus 4AC becomes 4 squared minus 4 times 4 times 1. Okay, that is 0. The discriminant is 0. Alright, so now we can go ahead with the rest of the quadratic formula, which is opposite of B. So opposite of b, so that's negative 4, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all right, so that's square root of our discriminant, all over 2a. Well, 2a, a is 4, so 2a is 8. All right, now um, square root of 0 is just 0, so this is just going to give us x equals negative 4 over 8 and um, this is going to reduce down to negative 1 half so that is the final answer alright so notice how it's true that uh, when the discriminant is 0 we only have one real solution okay instead of the usual two solutions okay alright what's next all right, let's do one more problem on this video and then we'll uh, give it a pause. Um, this is not in standard form. So before you get started, you need to get zero on one side. Okay, so you definitely want to subtract 4x from both sides. Okay, so this is gonna give me um, x squared minus 4x plus nine equals zero. All right, now this is in standard form. So I can see that A is 1, B is negative 4, and C 
is 9. Okay, got to put it in standard form first. All right, next let's go ahead and find that discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so that'll be negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. All right, we did not need um, the 1. Okay, so the discriminant is 7. All right, which means uh, because it's positive, I know I'm going to have two real solutions, by the way. Um, but let's go ahead and do the quadratic formula. All right, opposite b, opposite b, plus or minus square root, plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, all over 2a. Uh, I just felt like singing the song just then. So opposite of b, so b is negative 4, so we will do positive 4. All right, and then it's plus or minus square root. All right, plus or minus square root. b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant all over 2a. All right, a is 1, so 2a is just simply 2. Um, can I simplify the 4 and the 2? Can I reduce these? Because that's about all I see. Um, but the thing is, no, I can't. All right, remember when I reduced before, back on this problem, I drew this heart to remind us that it has to be all three. I need to be reducing three things or nothing. And on this one, that third thing is a, a 1. It's a 4, a 1, and a 2. There's no GCF here. So I cannot, I cannot just reduce the 4 and the 2. Please understand that. Okay, there it goes again. Every time I hit the eraser. Okay, um, so this is the final answer. I'm trying, I just want to put a box around it. All right. So that is the final answer. And uh, let's go ahead and stop this video here. All right. Um, let's see. You know what? Let's not stop the video here. We only have one problem left. All right. Even though the video is getting slightly longer than I like to be, um, let's just power through and, and finish this thing up. Okay. So, um, we have this equation. We could solve it using the uh, quadratic formula. We're sort of making some connections. Okay, if I, if I want to find the vertex, and it's in standard form. Okay, now remember when I'm talking about finding the vertex, I'm really talking about uh, a function like this. Okay, so um, to find the x value of the vertex, remember how we do. Um, the opposite of b over 2a. Okay, and um, a is 1, and b is 4, and c is 3. So um, if I do the opposite of b over 2a, that's going to be negative 4 over um, 2. So that's going to be negative 2. Okay, that's the x value of my vertex. All right, so I'm going to have negative 2 comma something. All right, if I want to know, know the y value of the vertex, um, I can just, uh, I'm, I'm basically plugging negative 2 in for these x's. Um, but you can use your calculator. Um, you could use the table feature. I mean, you have options. So um, we had, what, x squared um, plus 4x plus three okay and we had our um, our x value was negative two so we can just tell it to start at negative two okay so that's negative two comma negative one okay so there is our vertex um, maybe I'm supposed to write it here um, not sure what all this space is for. Maybe this is. Maybe I'm supposed to put it here. 
All right, now we're supposed to factor. Um, so factoring would look like this. x squared would be x times x. Uh, 3 can only be 3 times 1. And positive and positive. And it does make sense. Let's just take a quick look at it. Remember how inner plus outer must equal the middle? Well, inner, I have 3x. Outer, I have 1x. Together, that makes 4x, so it, it makes sense. OK, so there I factored it. Um, by the way, that would give me x-intercepts. It would give me the zeros would be negative 3 and negative 1 if I set these equal to 0 and solved. So that helps me graph it. So the zeros are at negative 3 and negative 1. So I have zeros at negative 3 and negative 1. OK. My vertex is at negative 2 comma negative 1. OK, so there's my vertex right there. So you, you see I have a parabola going like that. OK, we'll come back to that. The discriminant. OK, um, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. OK, so that's going to be 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. OK. All right, so the discriminant is 4. OK, oh, the roots. Um, OK, to me, those went together. I just automatically found the zeros or the roots. Um, but they belong here, negative 3 and negative 1. All right, of course, I got that by doing setting x plus 3 equal to 0 and setting x plus 1 equal to 0. That's how I found that. So all right, let's go ahead and erase from here since they belong down here. All right, so um, and then I guess over here I'm supposed to go ahead and do the graph. All right, so the discriminant is 4. Um, all right, well, as far as the graph, let's just use the values off the calculator again. OK, so we had our table. OK, we had started at negative 2. OK, so we have um, negative 2, negative 1. That was the vertex. And then uh, we have negative 1, comma 0. OK, so negative 1, comma 0, or I guess we already have that. 0, comma 3 would be another one, 0, comma 3. Let's scroll down and see if we can get another one. All right, 1, comma 8. So 1, comma 8. I'm sure that's the last one that will fit. But each one of these has a mirror image. So um, this has a mirror image right here. And this one has a mirror image right here. OK, so there we go. So you just go ahead and draw your parabola. OK, and it should look something like this. All right, and that's it. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I think that is the last problem of the lesson, and I will see you on the next video.